All righty. Well, this is uh, essentially my business logo. This is the view from my hometown of Titusville across the Indian River to the Kennedy Space Center. Of course, the iconic VAB is very recognizable. And the launch that I've illustrated here is the first launch I ever saw, and that's Apollo 17. Uh, the ISS passes overhead, and I have two stars in the sky for my grandsons. Next. Now, in 1972, I wrote to my U.S. Senator uh, because the Apollo program was ending and I desperately needed to see a launch. And uh, nobody in my family, including me, expected we would get a positive response. And when they did come back and say, sure, we'll get you invited to the launch, I had to write back and say, can you also invite my father? Because I was 16 years old. I couldn't rent a car or a hotel room. And uh, so they accepted my explanation. They invited my father, and we had an amazing three-day uh, vacation in Florida. Next. Now, the picture on the left uh, in this slide is a NASA image of Apollo 17 on the pad. The picture on the right is taken from a very close to that same location, uh, and that's taken with my little Kodak Instamatic camera, and it really does not do the Saturn V justice. But my view, what I saw in my eye, was that image on the left. It was, it was simply awestruck. Next. The night of launch, uh, we are at the Kennedy Space Center. Um, next to the VAB, there is a VIP bleacher set up. And uh, this was taken by a NASA photographer. Apollo 17 is lit up in the background. Uh, one little public service announcement I can offer is that uh, in Florida, do not wear a polyester jacket or slacks. It, <laughs> it was very warm and I was very uncomfortable, but I was still delighted to be there. Uh, next. Now at that during that trip and the briefings and everything else like they still do today, I learned that the mission patch was designed by Robert McCall. Gene Cernan had asked him to paint it, and it was the first time, to my knowledge, that an artist outside of NASA, he wasn't a contractor, he wasn't an employee, was asked to contribute to uh, the space program in this way. And to me, I said, this, this is perfect. I can do this. You know, I'm 16 years old, fill, you know, filled with myself. And, uh, and I said, this is how I can contribute. Next. The next year, uh, in the spring of 73, I pick up this magazine and I read the detailed story by the artist Frank Kelly Fries of how he came to design the first increment crew patch for Skylab. So I had the desire from Apollo 17's trip I knew what I wanted to do, and now I had the blueprints on how it is done. And so I started writing to astronauts asking if I could design their mission patch. Next. The first opportunity, because all the Skylab missions were uh, designed by this point, the first opportunity was during the second increment mission, uh, Alan Bean's crew, uh, when a leak developed in their reaction control system uh, uh, jets on the service module. And so uh, a plan had always been in place for such an eventuality. And so NASA started putting that plan into work. And so I wrote to the commander, Vance Brand, and said, and sent him this drawing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I said, I, you know, I would like to design your mission patch, and here's what I've come up with. And uh, by the time he responded, a workaround had been developed, and the mission was canceled. Next. So after uh, nine years of trying, I said, why don't I write to the most uh, accomplished artist, the most successful one, and ask for his advice? And the advice I received was not the advice I wanted. Uh, I, what I wanted at that young age 
1982. So let's see, I was, what, 26? I wanted him to contact me and say, here's a phone number. Call this guy. Tell him I said to call you. And uh, what I got was the advice I needed. And he wrote to at the bottom of my letter, to achieve success, evaluate your talents honestly, set your goals realistically, work tirelessly at your art, and love every minute of the work, study the great art of the past, come back from inevitable failure and disappointments with courage, and work relentlessly. And he actually sketched on the outside of the envelope, and I now I have an original Robert McCall hanging in my home office. And now this is the type of advice I give to young artists who contact me for advice. Uh, there is no shortcut, and I learned that eventually. But you have to uh, you have to basically pay your dues and, and earn your way in. Next. So in 1985, I wrote to Robert Crippen. Uh, they were planning to launch Discovery from the Vandenberg Air Force Base on a secret uh, Department of Defense mission. And um, uh, I sub and he wrote back and, and said, sure, we'll take a look and see what you can create. And he gave me some parameters to work with. And I submitted uh, the four designs on the left. And the, sadly, the mission was canceled after Challenger. Uh, a couple of years ago, I contacted Mike Mullane and Jerry Ross via Facebook, and I said, wouldn't it be interesting uh, as a, you know, pandemic shutdown kind of a project uh, to finish what we started in 1985? Uh, over the years, I had learned that the design with the eagle was Crip's favorite, so that's the one we chose to develop. Um, and so we worked back and forth. Uh, with them the way we would have in the 80s. And then when the design was complete, I contacted NASA's patch manufacturer and I had it made to the specifications it would have been made with the size, the separate sew on tap and, and so forth. Uh, the only thing we did differently is uh, we added my initials and Jorge's on the side, which never would have been done uh, on a NASA patch uh in in those days and uh so we didn't want people to think that this was some discovered vintage relic uh this is a modern replica of what might have been and uh everybody on the crew uh, guy gardner bob crippen uh jerry uh, mike uh mike Mullane, uh dale gardner uh had since passed away but they liked the design. They thought we encapsulated the mission goals very well. And uh, they all said that we wish we could have flown it. Next. Now, in 2004, uh, an astronaut finally writes back and says, sure, we'd love to work with you to design our patch. And it was the 11th expedition to the space station. So in doing my research, I came up with four pen and ink drawings. Uh, that I highlighted here, um, uh, you know, just for presentation purposes, and uh, and I submitted them to the crew. Now the uh, the B and D uh, designs uh, had some possibilities. Uh, those were the two that the astronauts liked the most. Uh, John Phillips' name on the number on letter D, he would have swapped. Uh, places his name would have swapped places with Sergei Volkov, and Sergei Volkov uh, was uh, expected to launch on the shuttle to join them for the expedition, uh, but that didn't happen. Next, they came back with some um, feedback of their own. Uh, Sergei Krikalov, the commander, had uh, been a part of the Expedition One crew and they had chosen the call sign Alpha. And so he wanted me to uh, design a stylized Greek letter Alpha and kind of hide it into the patch. And we tried different shapes, the keyhole, the, uh, the uh, diamond, the rounded diamond there and the 2D. That one of, of these were my favorite, even though it wasn't what they had asked for. 
Uh, and they said that that was while it was a very pretty image, it, it had the uh, appearance of the ISS dropping a bomb on the Earth. And of course, you know, NASA has to be very careful how the mission patches could be perceived by people that are very unfamiliar with the program. So obviously, the fact that somebody had mentioned that eliminated that design entirely. Next. So my final submission was in September of 2004. And if you look closely at that slide, you'll see that cutting and pasting was, in fact, cutting and pasting. Uh, I had the blue background uh, glued to another background. Uh, the lettering is uh, uh, Helvetica stick-on letters that I got at an office supply store. And uh, the uh, ISS, uh, I drew and then on another piece of paper, cut it, you know, colored it and cut it out and then glued it to that background. And then the, uh, the uh, flames from the two number ones uh, were actually uh, glitter from my daughter's art kit. Uh, she was in elementary school. And, uh, well, no, I'm sorry, 2004, she had graduated, so I kind of inherited her supplies. Uh, and I had to do some, some surgery with the uh, stick-on letters to create Cyrillic uh, letters. And uh, in December of 2004, John emailed me the design on the right after it had been polished by the great, uh, JSE graphics team. And he said, you can, it still looks enough like yours that you can proudly claim ownership. And uh, by the time it was unveiled, uh, Sergei Volkov had been dropped from the crew. And next slide. He had been replaced by a son. And since he was the son of a cosmonaut, uh, he said that the son is him. And uh, that was the Expedition 11 patch unveiled in February of 2005. Next. Now, I heard from Jorge Kartz after the unveiling he congratulated me on the accomplishment, and he confessed to me that he, too, had always dreamed about designing a mission patch. And I said, I didn't know if the opportunity would ever arise again, but if it did, why don't we collaborate? So in 2000, late 2007, early 2008, when I was contacted by Eric Bowe on the SDS-126 crew, um, I said, Jorge, why don't you create a design based on your understanding of the mission goals. I'll create a design uh, the same way. We'll submit both. And, uh, and we did. And these are the two uh, initial uh, drafts that we submitted to the crew. And they came back with some feedback. Next slide. And we combined some of the elements of both Jorge's and my design. Uh, there was a crew change by this time. Uh, Joan Higginbotham had been replaced by Heidi Stephanishan Piper. And um, that was the biggest challenge, quite honestly, in this patch was coming up with something other, because they didn't want a circle, coming up with something other than that that could fit the names of different sizes. And uh, so the, uh, the final patch the uh, Endeavor is, uh, has dropped off its uh, cargo of supplies, as well as Sandy Magnus, who was joining Expedition 18, and it is making its way back to Earth. Uh, the sun rays point to the station. The constellation Orion uh, belt points to the red uh, planet Mars, because at that time, the next program on the horizon was the Constellation program. And um, we were going back to the moon and on to Mars. And of course, uh, that program was canceled uh, in favor eventually of the Artemis program. But that's what all these design elements mean. And to your point, Tracy, that there's nothing on a patch that's there uh, by accident. Everything is there deliberately for a reason. Next. Now, 
when the 133 crew was selected, they were going to be the final shuttle, excuse me, shuttle crew. And so uh, they made the wise decision, in my mind, to contact Robert McCall and ask him to design their patch. He had done STS-1, and in doing STS-133, he would have had perfect bookends for the shuttle program. And uh, he submitted two uh, watercolor draft designs on a Friday. Next slide. And these are the two designs that he submitted uh, to NASA. He sent them FedEx package because they were actual watercolor paintings. And that was a Friday, and he passed away Saturday morning. And so the crew had learned of his passing before they received the package. And that weekend, they didn't know what they were going to do uh, because, you know, here this guy had said, sure, I would love to design your patch. And they hadn't received the package yet. And so when they did receive it, um, the, uh, you know, while the designs were truly beautiful, that's just the way Robert McCall was, uh, they weren't complete. Uh, Steve Lindsay's name had been spelled wrong. And um, they, while the crew appreciated why McCall put the wreath in the designs, they didn't want the wreath in it because it reminded them of the official emblem for the Astronaut Memorial Foundation, which McCall designed as well, that also had a wreath. So next, Eric Bow, who was the pilot of STS-126, was also the pilot for this mission. And he said, well, why don't we get Tim and Jorge to finish the, uh, the design work? And so we very carefully took the designs using the crew feedback. I liked the wreath myself. I thought they were, it was awesome. And so we, uh, we played with the gold wreath, like the orbiter passing through that. We also played with having a full stack as opposed to just the orbiter. And, uh, and you know, the crew was, you know, they still didn't want the wreath and, uh, they decided, no, the full stack didn't work. Next slide. So we kept the actual rough watercolor space shuttle that McCall had painted. And uh, the way the design is to be interpreted is the orbiter uh, is completing its last mission. It was still expected to be the last one at this point. And uh Although it's launching on a brilliant plume of fire, um, the uh, the plume gets wider as you go higher. So that that uh, crescent uh, can also be the the exhaust plume. It can be the Earth. It can be multiple things. You know, they wanted to leave it as open to interpretation as possible because that's the way uh, art truly is. It's it's subjective. You know, everybody who looks at a painting sees what they want to see in it, and it's never the same thing as everybody else. Uh, the six white uh, five-pointed stars represent the crew. Uh, the large gold star by Eric Bowe's name represents Robert McCall. The two smaller similar stars under Steve Lindsay's name are there for Jorge and I. And then the other smaller stars kind of trailing back down uh, to the bottom of the patch are, are, are trying to evoke uh, what fireworks look like after the explosion, and then they kind of drift back down to the ground. And those are there to represent all the people that made the shuttle program possible. Um, we decided since this could very well be our last opportunity to do something that artists have done since the Apollo program and hide our initials into the patch. So at the very bottom, right under the white part of the plume, you see a yellow T and then a little lower and to the right, you see a J. And we wanted to keep that in there, uh, of course. Uh, you know, artists had done that in the past. So, you know, we thought it was, it was entirely appropriate. Um, and, not only for Tim and Jorge, 
My daughter's name is Trisha. My son-in-law's name is Jason. My grandsons are Tyler and Jack. So I really wanted those initials to stay in the patch if at all possible. But we knew the final decision wasn't ours. Uh, when the patch was unveiled, uh, the T and J were still there. And I didn't learn until a while later that the graphic artist assigned to finish the patch for all the things NASA uses them for was named Terry Johnson. So I'm very glad that he was assigned to it and not someone else. Next. Now, luckily, uh, due to the success of my mission patchwork, I've been able to build a portfolio of commemoratives. And luckily for me, the space program has never been uh, uh, stingy with inspiration. Now, the all-women spacewalk was originally supposed to happen in March of 2018, uh, but there was some problem confer uh, configuring the second spacesuit, spacesuit sorry, for um, uh, Anne McLean. And NASA was highly criticized uh, in the public for, I guess, poor planning or foresight. I don't know the full story of that issue, but the spacewalk was time sensitive. So it was done by two others. Um, when Christina Koch got to the station and Jessica Mayer was there, um, they uh, were assigned a spacewalk. There was plenty of time to configure the spacesuits. And then the, uh, we decided to use the, um, the graphic that's on the uh, right shoulder of the uh, EMU, which was done by uh, Hamilton Sunstrand, the, uh, the uh, life support uh, manufacturer, and it's supposed to be a, an update of Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. Um, and they have, you know, the circle and the square and so forth. Well, I made the circle part of the uh, symbol for women. The square is represented by the inside border of the solar arrays. And then uh, the date is at the bottom. The eight ball at the, at the uh, intersection of the cross is there because both Christina Koch and Jessica Muir were members of that astronaut class nicknamed the Eight Balls. Um, Sandy Fletcher was the EVA officer in Mission Control. Stephanie Wilson was the uh, uh, IVA, the, the, the coordinator when they're inside getting ready for the spacewalk. And she was in Mission Control. And Bridget Scheib was the task MPSR. Next. Now, uh, speaking of the space program providing generous uh, inspiration, when Wally Funk was able to realize her dream of space flight, um, the, uh, that presented instant you know, inspiration. This patch probably took me a day. And I imagined the window frame of a Blue Origin spaceship Wally Funk has brought up to space a Mercury 13 lapel pin, and she is looking out the window and thinking of the 12 other women that she was associated with, and their names are ghost-stitched into the black background, and the date of the flight is ghost-stitched at the bottom of the patch. And uh, I was able to get through intermediaries, get Wally a couple of these patches uh, later on that fall. And I was told that she loved it very much. So that was, that was uh, very heartening to hear that, uh, that the person I was trying to pay tribute to enjoyed what I created. Next. Now, James Webb Telescope uh, was... Um, delayed and delayed and delayed. But at Christmas Day of 2021, everything came together and it was launched from French Guyana uh, and it has exceeded expectations so far. This patch had been designed months in advance and we were just waiting for it to be able to be released because you can't really, I mean, just like uh, the Artemis One launch commemoratives. I've already designed those. I just can't do anything with them until the launch actually happens. 
But this came together. Uh, AB Emblem made the patch. Uh, they were ready to go to accept orders on Christmas Eve. And this has been a real, you know, Cinderella kind of story um, that where everything kind of came together at the right time. It's been very well received. And I'm very grateful for it. The stars in the sky represent the organizations, the universities, and so forth that cooperate on this mission. The three space agencies, European Space Agency, NASA, and the Canadian Space Agency, are represented uh, at the bottom of the patch. And then the launch is right in the center. The, uh, the palm trees on the left and the smoke on the right represent French Guiana. Next. Now, Apollo 17's 50th anniversary is next month. Uh, I released a set of patches in 2017 because the 50th anniversaries of Apollo missions began in January of 2017. Uh, this one, uh, I imagine uh, the same statue that uh, Robert McCall used for his inspiration uh, the Belvedere Apollo statue in Rome, but I imagined him from a different point of view. Uh, the statue, he's actually an archer. He's wearing a quiver and, uh, you know, toga draped over his shoulders and arms. And he was actually out holding out a bow, but in the 500 or so years since the statue was created, the uh, left arm, the left hand has been lost. And uh, so I reimagined Apollo pointing his way to the future, directing the American Eagle uh, to fly past the moon and on to Mars. And then I hid a Apollo uh, mission, a program emblem in the button that holds his, uh, his flag on his shoulder. And I, I made it a U.S. flag because the inspiration for that came from athletes in the Olympics running around the victory lap on the track in the track and field uh, uh, races, holding their flags and wearing their flags. So I figured this would be a perfect uh, time for Apollo to wear the American flag. And um, the stars in the sky represent every astronaut that flew during the Apollo program. The quote at the bottom is from Gene Cernan's uh, last EVA on the lunar surface. America's challenge of today has forged man's destiny of tomorrow. Next. Now, of course, uh, Apollo's younger sister is named Artemis. And uh, I, I've seen the Apollo, the, the, the statue of Diana in, uh, in Rome. Artemis really has two names. In Roman uh, uh, mythology, she's Diana. In Greek mythology, she's Artemis. But she's the sister of Apollo. She's the goddess of the hunt and the goddess of the moon. And I wanted to, to uh, illustrate her as a powerful warrior because of the struggles the Artemis program has had since the end of the shuttle program with funding, with developing hardware and so forth. So this Artemis is a warrior because she's already been so, through so much. She's uh, in front of the moon, but she's aiming her arrow towards Mars. And the Google Translate Latin is uh, to the moon and Mars. Next. Now, these are all the mission patches that I have had the pleasure of working with. And I always end my talks with this slide and tell the, the kids in the audience that don't ever give up on your dream. You know, you're going to hear no from many different places. Just don't accept the no yourself. If there is something that you truly want to do, don't ever give up. Because if a college dropout like me can create all of this, just imagine what you can do. Next. And that's my presentation. I'm more than uh, happy to take questions.